Good afternoon. We're on again. It's Saturday afternoon and we are here to talk about the word of God. We are here to uplift Jesus. We are here to know who God is today. All right. So we are going to be in the book of Ephesians. We have a storm that's coming here in New York. Um, Henry, it is, uh, you know, overcast, you know what I mean? And, uh, it's, you know, hopefully not going to be bad. I pray that it's not bad. I pray that we don't lose any power or anything because, um, you know, there's so much going on in the world today that we, um, we need to focus on God. We need to understand that, you know, this is, this is the end times and, um, we need to receive Christ into our hearts and be born again by his spirit. Right. I'm not saying that these things are happening because of God. I'm not saying that sometimes things happen because of the natural course of things, you know, but um, we need to know Christ in those in the middle of those natural courses that happen in the earth. Okay, Ephesians, Ephesians 2, 11 through 22. That's what we're doing today. I'm just going to get my Bible over here. And if you have your Bible, you can get it or you can just listen along. Okay. So we are going to read the scripture first. We are talking about um, the main subject we are talking about is his grace and our salvation. And um, we um, were in the beginning of chapter two last week. Now we're in the last part of chapter two. And we're talking about the union that God made, not just with himself, but he brought Jew and Gentile together. Now, I explained Gentile before back and when the Israelites were um, underneath uh, the covenant of God, when 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 um, they're still underneath the covenant of God, but what I mean is that before Christ, okay, that's what I mean. Before Christ, um, they had a covenant with God. God made a covenant with them um, that they would be His people and He would be their God. Um, but they got uh, a lot of pride in them, where they thought, "Well, we're the people of God." And um, uh, the Gentiles are, you know, dirty. They're on the side. They're nothing. They're nobody. We, we, we. That sounds familiar. Sounds like a lot of us in the church house. We, we, we. We, you know, certain denomination. We're the true denomination. We're the true people of God. Let me tell you something. The true people of God is anybody who has received Christ into their heart, has believed on him for salvation, and tr- put their trust in him. And has been born again of his spirit. That is a true believer. That is the true people of God. Those are the true people of God. All right? Let's get that straight. It's not a denomination, y'all. You know? Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus, to see that. I don't push denomination, I push Christ. And you should too if you're saved. Okay. Ephesians 2, 11 through 22. Amen. Oneness and peace in Christ is the heading. Don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. Now Paul is just doing a matter of speaking. He's saying that, look, remember you used to be outsiders before you was in Christ. You are called uncircumcised heathens by the Jews who are proud of their circumcision. There's that pride that God wants us to stay away from. Even though it affected only their bodies, the circumcision, we explained what circumcision was before. If not, you can look it up in a dictionary. It's the dictionary is the, the um, cutting off of the foreskin of the man's penis. And that was a sign within the covenant that God had with his people. That's what he asked them to do within that covenant. Okay. But what he's saying is, you know, you Gentiles, you're in now. You don't need to be circumcised. Nobody needs to be circumcised. It's the circumcision of the flesh, the spiritual nature that has to, to be revived. I would, then I told you when we are born, we're born lost with the sinful nature. And when we are born again. That is when Holy Spirit comes into us and makes us alive. Thank God for the through, thank God and through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Amen. I'm a little tired today, so I'm a little... My words are not coming out right. <laughs> I was studying. I was, I was um, a little sleepy, but I said, no, I have to bring the word of God to the people. I was really, really, really sleepy. I, went, I had to lay down and take a nap, <laughs> but I wanted to bring the word of God to you. Okay, let me stop swinging so it won't <laughs> give a, a distraction. You who were not in the circumcision, even though it affected only their bodies and not their hearts. Mm. So he's saying that the physical circumcision just affected the Israelites' hearts. It didn't, I mean, Israelites' bodies, not, not their hearts. See, the heart being changed is what is the, the result of salvation. The heart is changed. The spirit is made alive. And the mind is being renewed. Amen. In those days, you were living apart from Christ. They didn't know Christ. They didn't know who, who Christ was. What? Messiah? Who? In those days, they were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from citizenship among the people of Israel. So they, they were without a covenant and they were without a citizenship. They did not belong to the people of God. Now, there were some that they call them God fearers. That attached themselves to the Israelites because they did see that Jehovah was the true and the living God. But um, in order to become Jewish, they would have to be circumcised. So they still had to have that skin cut. And what Paul is saying here is you don't have to have your skin cut now. You have to have to believe in Jesus Christ. Allow him to do a spiritual surgery in your heart. And that's the circumcision that Christ has done in us today. You know what I mean? Now, people, you know, little boys are circumcised in a hospital because it's cleaner and, you know, it's become a, a, a pattern of um, society, which is fine. But we do not have to be circumcised um, to follow Christ. We just need to believe. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. <laughs> You did not know the covenant promises God made to them. They, you know, we as Gentiles, we did not know um, uh, the promises of God and, and, and what God really had within that covenant because we were not partakers of it, you know. It's talking about before Christ. And it says, Paul says something that's very, um, very true but sobering it says that the gentiles those that were not jews lived in this world without god and without hope do you have hope today or are you scared about all these things that's going on in the world do you have hope of salvation or are you calling on your lawyer or your doctor or your teacher or for them to help you where Christ should be helping you. Thank God for the lawyer, the doctor, and the teacher. But when we do not have Christ in our lives, they, like, become our God and we depend on them. And that God doesn't want us to do that. Get help from them, yes. But know God is God if you've been born again. Amen. Thank you, Lord. But now you have been united. It, it, he's talking to people that are in Christ. Now you have been united with Jesus Christ. We have a beautiful union with him, y'all. Explore him. Explore yourself. Explore this union. It's not just him that we get to know. You get to know yourself, not as a God, but, it, but who he's making you to be. We need to rejoice in that. Everything is not oh, God, 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 God all the day. You're not a robot. Christ is living his life through you. He uses your personality. He uses who you are to glorify his name. I always talk about identity. That's the thing I'm always talking about. Identity and destiny and, and the gospel. You know what I mean? Because your identity is in the gospel once you have accepted Christ. And your destiny is in the gospel once you have accepted Christ. Because you become a child of God and your destiny is heaven. Now, yes, God has a purpose for you here down on this earth. You get with him. As you already have, some of you, get with him in prayer, as, as I'm saying, and talk with him and find out what your destiny is. What is your purpose? 
to not know your purpose and be born again is like you're not really fully living fully living you're not living to your fullest excuse me you know but if you're born again and you know your purpose you can't be deterred you can't be distracted you know what I mean for a long period of time because you're going to say no this is not part of my purpose and I'm saying I'm not saying just throw people aside sometimes you have to you do have to disconnect yourself from people who are not part of your purpose or who are, or who are hindering your purpose that's another thing too some of us are wrapped up in to things and wrapped up with people that that's not going to go forward with us that's not part of our purpose you know what I mean you need to drop that friend that's not part of your purpose who um who has been hindering you and so forth don't let people hinder you don't let people hinder you with their opinions either okay well people don't like me I don't care if they don't and people are jealous of me too I really don't care I pray for them and I love them you know what I mean but if that's what they want to do if they want to waste their Christianity on that and I mean wasted you know you're down here you're not you're not you be, being jealous of somebody and um you know <laughs> that's a waste of time enjoy Jesus as I am enjoying him you enjoy him in your way with him and I am enjoying him in my way amen amen thank you Lord this ought not be in the the body of Christ you know what I'm saying? Now, some, some people are toxic and you got to cut them off. Like my abuser. I had to cut him off. But other people that are in our lives that are Christian. He wasn't a Christian. That are Christian. We need to realize that, that we are one in Christ. And we're one together. Speaking of that, I'm going to talk about racism for a minute. It says that the verses that's coming says... But you have been united <laughs> with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus' sacrifice that brought us near to God. As they used to sacrifice the, the bulls and the goats and the turtle doves and the stuff. Centuries ago, millennia ago. To um, get, it wasn't even a, a real forgiveness. It was just a covering. Until Christ came. Christ has the real forgiveness. You know what I mean? Christ is our covering. He is our deliverance. He is our salvation. He is the gospel. Amen. So it says, once you were far away from God, now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Jesus Christ. For Christ himself has brought peace to us. Before Christ, we don't have peace. It's not just a tranquility and calmness. It is a knowing. A knowing and an assurance of God's goodness, his salvation, and his plan for our life. Peace. I have peace because I know God is in control. Peace is about letting God stay in control of a situation, not trying to Oh my God, what are we going to do? You know, sometimes we do that, you know, but we need to refocus and say, no, God's going to show me what to do. God's going to make a way out of this. Peace is about remaining in place while God, while God is doing what he needs to do. People say, hold your peace. Stay in your ground. Rest in God. Peace is a rest. It's resting in him. It's a knowing. No, I know God's got this. I got peace about this and not just saying, oh, I got peace about this and do whatever you want to do. No, we're here to do the will of God. So when we have peace, we're allowing the will of God to be worked out in our lives. Amen. As we talked about last week, him, us being his workmanship, working out his will in our lives. For Christ himself has brought peace to us. He united Jews and Gentiles. This is where I want to talk about racism. Because that was that was a racist type of thing, you know, not liking the Gentiles because they were of another ethnicity. Because you thought they were better than them, because you because the Israelites thought they were better than them. And to one people, when in his own body on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. We were, when we were born, we were separated from God with the sinful nature 
Hating God. Now people say, oh, I, I never hated God. The sinful nature is where the hatred resides. Excuse me. And we are at enmity. We're against God before we get saved. Because you want to do what you want to do. That's why we're against God. There it is. When you say, oh, I don't need God. I'm, I, you know, I don't need to be born again, Laurel. You know, I'm all right. I got money. I got a good job. I got a family. And I got good friends. I don't need God. What do I need God for? You need God to save your soul eternally from damnation. We are damned when we are born. Spiritually, we are damned. We're bound for hell. But when we get born again, Christ comes into our lives. He makes us new in him. Amen. And gives us new life and gives us resurrection life, eternal life. Forever. Once you're saved, you're saved forever. I've done a whole teaching on that when I taught on Romans. Look at the past teachings. Amen. Amen. Praise him. He said he united us on the cross. God wants the, the war between white people and black people and Asians and this one and that one to be done here in this earth. You're not liking somebody because of the color of their skin. You're having hatred in your heart because you've been mistreated. God doesn't want that. God wants us to love one another and realize that we're made in the image of God, all of us together. White people are not better than black people. Black people are not better than white people. Asian people are not better than black people. Black people are not better than Asian people. And so forth. <laughs> indigenous, indigenous people are not better than white people. White people are not better than them. But yet a lot of us have this thinking. Now I want to go to something. In the church... We have this separation also. I meant to put that quote up. I'm going to put it up. I think it was Martin Luther King, Dr. King who said, I think it was Dr. King or somebody who said, the most segregated, Sundays are the most segregated day of the week. Because you got the white folks in their church and you got the black folks in their church. Now, yes, there are many, you know, thousands of churches that are mixed. Um, but he was speaking of down south also, you know what I mean, where there was, there was a separation there is no separation in Christ. We are all in Christ Jesus. Black, white, Latino, um, indigenous, Asian. All of us are one in Christ. If you have accepted Christ, you are one with him. And you are one with your brethren, with our brethren. There's no room for racism in the church. Maybe the worldly people want to be like that. And I say worldly, but worldly means you don't have God as your life. You exclude God. Remember before, I'm not talking about, I'm, I, I'm not, uh, um, what's the word? Um, people say, oh no, I pray, you know, I say my prayers and I treat everybody good. And you know, I don't, no, it's not about that. Jesus didn't come for you, come here for you to just say um, prayers at night or in the morning and do whatever you want to do during the week. And um, for us to just take God how we want to take it, like he's a puppet. God is not a puppet. He is the almighty God. And he is to be worshipped uh, in a certain way. And he tells us how to worship him in the word of God. In John 4, 24, 23 and 24, it says God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. When you say in your prayers or when you say to yourself, you know, patting yourself in the back, Oh, no, I'm okay. I'm good. You know, I'm, I don't do nobody no wrong. And, you know, I try to help people once in a while. And, you know, what? no, I don't need to do this born again thing, man. That's religion. Born again, being born again is not a religion or a denomination. It is an experience with the almighty God where he comes into you and changes you and your nature. Uh, hallelujah. So it's not about being good. Because none of us are good. Once Christ comes in, he makes us good. He has to be Lord of your life. He's not somebody that you just pick up on a Sunday or a Saturday when you go to church. 
I'm talking to church folk now too. Oh, you know, or you in the church house all the time, but you don't have a relationship with him. Are you born again? I'm going to ask you this every week. Are you born again? If you are not sure, then accept Christ right now into your life. Say, I want to be sure. I don't want to just be church in it. I don't want to just be, um, you know, as they say in the Spanish church, mucho um, missionera. I'm doing a lot of missionary, but uh, you don't know the God you on a mission for, though. You don't know him. Now, this is true. There are people in a church house. I've had them talk to me. Oh, Laurel, I, I, I've been a Christian all my life. I was born in a church. Nobody is born in a church. Nobody is born into Christ just by being born in the flesh. You have to be born again of the spirit. Uh, that is the born again that God is talking about in his word. He's not talking about being born in a certain denomination. Your grandmama was this or that. Well, our grandmama was this, you know, so I'm going to be this. But a lot of us black folks, you know, well, grandma was Baptist. Our grandmama was, um, you know, this or that. Well, I'm going to be that. But I guess it was okay because grandmama didn't. No, you have to know God for yourself. You have to have an experience, an encounter with the living God for yourself. That's the joy of it. That's the union that you have with him when you accept and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation. That is everything. Uh, not going to church. We thank God for church because that's where we fellowship. That's where we go to worship God, number one. But not just worship God because, see, you worship God when you save the money in your account. Did you know that? You're giving honor to God. When you're saving money and not spending it frivolously. Now, I'm talking to me because I'm a spender. I'm Like I said, I'm talking to me. Worshiping God in a church house is not necessarily worshiping. You could raise your hands and praise him and stuff. But if he's not in your heart, then that's all in vain. Matthew 7, read it. There was people that prophesied. There was people that, that um, um, uh, did many miracles. And I said, wait a minute, why are we not getting in? He said, I never knew you. There was no intimacy between us. I don't know you. You're not my child. You haven't been born again. It's just like I have a child, right? And then another kid comes over and says, oh, no, I I'm your kid too. No, you're not, baby. I didn't birth you. So God is saying the same thing. If he did not birth you in the spirit, uh, you are not born again and you need to be born again be, to come out of the damnation that is on us than when we are born in the flesh. That's a natural birth. Hallelujah, Lord. I'm not here to condemn anybody because I was lost at one time too. But God saved me. He didn't save me to stay lost because people say, um, oh, you know, I'm a sinner just saved by grace. I'm a just, no, I'm not anymore. He changed my nature. Sin comes at me from the outside. Yes, I'm still human. Yes, I still have this, this, this flesh I live in. But my nature has changed and I have to have the right responses. Amen. When sin comes at me. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. I'm not a God, though. Thank God. God is God, but he has given me his character and it's growing in me. If you were saved, what was you saved from? You just forgiven and um, that's it? You, what are you, a forgiven sinner? Or are you a forgiven child of God whose identity has been changed because your father's nature is within you? And you don't have that old nature anymore. You just need to know how to operate within that new nature. No, 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 I don't want that. That's not me. It's not about what you do. Remember that. It's about who you are. Now, if you don't know who you are, you need to find out from Christ. You need to get that from Jesus by being born again and have your identity changed. Uh, you're still a man and a woman, man or a woman, excuse me, but you are a child of God once you accept Christ. That's all I'm saying. Let's finish up these scriptures. <laughs> so we're one in Christ and we're one with each other in, in, in the body in, in the union that we have with Christ. 
There is no separation. There is no, I'm better than you because I'm black in the body of Christ. And there is not even no, I'm better than you because I'm saved and you're not. That's not right either. No, Jesus, save me. And I want you to receive him, to, receive him into your heart today. He will bring you joy and peace and love. Get Jesus today. Let this be the day you say, you know what? Man, August 20, 21st, man, 2021. I gave my heart to the Lord Jesus. I was listening to this lady, Minister Laurel Britt, and um, you know, she was talking about being saved. And, you know, I realized that, yeah, my life is lit. That means my life is nice. But something is missing. And I need that something that's missing, and that's Jesus. I'm a, I think I'm going to let Christ into my heart today. I think I'm going to receive Christ and believe on him and receive his Holy Spirit and get born again. Hallelujah, Jesus. Do it today because you don't know if you're going to wake up tomorrow. You don't know. You might lay down, take a nap, and not wake up. Right? But if you're in Christ, you'll wake up in glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Jesus is coming again, y'all. He's coming to get his saints. Be one of them. Amen. It says that he did this by ending the system of law, verse 2015, with his commandments and regulations. God did away with all of that, y'all. It says in Colossians 2, he did away with all of those things. We don't need to look to a law to save us nor to keep us saved. We need to look to Christ within us. Who is, if you have been born again, you look to Christ within you. Not that you are a God, you are not the God, but the almighty God is within you though. Amen. I don't know why it's like always a glare, you know. Glare, 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 go away. <laughs> and don't come back no other day. <laughs> Amen. All right. So. He broke down all of that stuff with laws and commandments and rules and regulations. He made peace between Jews and Gentiles. Creating in himself one new man, one new people. A Christian is one new man. Along with my Asian brother, my Asian sister, my white sister. My white brother, my black brother, my black sister. And I say it that way because we that's what we use within our culture anyway. And that goes back to the motherland. But the motherland is not what saved us. Christ saves us. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is the gospel. It's not a thing, an idea or doctrine. The gospel is not an idea. I'll say it again. The gospel is not an idea, a thing, or doctrine. The gospel is a person, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Lord. The good news is him. He came here to save us. Good news. When you have good news with somebody, you share it. And that's what I'm doing with you today. Amen. Amen. Together as one body, we're one body in Christ is what he's trying to tell us. All these schisms and denominations and all of this. He is not pleased with all these denominations. I'm going to tell you that right now because it's division. Well, you're not the people of God. We are. Well, no, you can't be. We are. No, no, you guys are both wrong. It's us. No, it's all of us who have received and accepted Christ into our hearts. Uh, why can't we understand this? And we want to judge people. Oh, look what they doing over there. Oh, so-and-so, so-and-so. Oh, they ain't keeping the Sabbath. They don't got God with them. Oh, look at those people over there. They, they wearing pants. They, they must not have God. Oh, she not no Christian woman. She wearing pants. These are the things that I grew up with hearing <laughs> in, in, in the churches. You know, in a church I grew up with and then visiting different church. Well, we didn't really visit no other church because that church was saying they was the church. So it's like um, God is not pleased with all of this schisms and um, division. 
thinking that we're better than another denomination or thinking, you know what? I don't think that I'm better, but you know, I know that we do have the truth and they need to come to the truth. They need, you know, I've heard it this way. They need to come to the truth of the the knowledge of the Sabbath, you know, and then they'll, you know, have full salvation or they need to um, adopt this ideology. No, they don't need to do nothing but accept Jesus Christ and believe on him for salvation. Uh, That's all we need to do. And grow in that. If we could come together, we're not supposed to be focusing on what divides us. Stop looking at people. Oh, well, you know, I can't go to their church because they Sunday keepers and they think a different way. You know? Oh, well, they're they're not on any odd doctrine, so we we don't listen to that preacher no more. What? Do you got all the freaking truth? I know I don't got all the truth. I just share what I have here, what I know from the word of God, but I don't know everything. And I could be wrong on some stuff and God show me where I am, but I've been touched by the Holy Spirit. When I look in the word, oh, this is truth. This resonates with me. This resonates in my spirit. You know what I mean? Not feeling good. I'm talking about resonating where the spirit of God says, yes, this is my truth. And I want you to receive it today. It's not about denomination, y'all. We better realize that. Jesus is, when he comes back again, he's going to, I think, I'm not saying he's going to give us a scolding, but he's going to be like, I just wanted y'all to, to be the body that you already were. You already are one. You want to speak against Catholicism, they're the beast, and all of this kind of stupidness. Well, what about you being the beast, talking about somebody else being the beast? Now, I know there were some scholars that said, I love Martin Luther. You know, he wasn't perfect. He did some stuff that was wrong. But I love the way he went after truth. You know, no, he didn't do everything right. But, because he was one of the ones that said, um, you know, Catholic Church is a beast. Nah, man. You better stop saying that about people. What are you doing? Are you born again? See, if you're born again, you'll be Okay. But if you're looking at other people, oh, they're not doing right. They need to do so-and-so. Let us think about what we need to do. Because if everybody thinks about what each person needs to do, then we will have the harmony and the unity that Christ wants wants us to have in the body of Christ. Uh, Not all these divisions and things. God is not pleased with that. God is not pleased you saying that's a, they not right. They not no Christian. Unless they saying that the devil is God and God is the devil. That's blasphemy. Then, that, then you say, no, nah, man, that, that person is not saved. And sometimes you can look at somebody at their just sometimes they're just their aura is demonic. And, you know, that's not a brother or sister. You know what I mean? But you judging people, you judging people and you saying, oh, they not, they they not of God because they not keeping a Sabbath or oh, they not of God because they eating pork or oh, they not of God because of all of these things. It has nothing to do with that. Your salvation has nothing to do with what you put in your body and what you put in your mouth. Jesus said that. Why don't we understand that? Now, I'm not saying you just go around just doing what you want to do. I always say that every week. No, we won't do we do what Christ wants to do because and we are different. Uh, we are new people in him. It's about being different. It's about your identity changing. It's not about, oh well, um, you know, I can't do this and I can't do that. Oh, my religion say I don't do this and I don't do that. Oh, my denomination. Oh, there here's the, the one that I had a brother tell me in the church. Um, I was sitting there with a bunch of young people. And we were just sitting there rapping, just talking. You know what I mean? They needed to just relax and had that, that, that religious. I was talking about the tie last week, right? That was funny, right? The religious tie around their freaking neck. And they needed to just sit there and just talk and just, you know, say what was on their mind without being judged. So um, I was talking with them. And, you know, I don't, I don't get with no judgment with the young people. It's, the, it's my brothers and sisters who um, may not be acting the way I think I need, that they should be acting, that I can't judge them. And God is working with me with that. And God forgive me for judging other people with doing that. Because I grew up in that type of environment, judging other people. But they not of God because they not doing this. They not doing like me. Who is you? Who is you? Who is me? Nobody. We are nobody without Christ. And even in Christ, humility 
is the life. Uh, so us judging other people, God is working with me on that. It's like, okay, God, oh my God, it's just like dead. They not sit, they sitting in a church house, not saying nothing to you. I don't like that. So, so, but I have to leave people alone, preach the gospel, share the love of God, and that's that. You know, if there's something that I need to say to somebody, you know, I'll say it in private to them, whatever. But I, God is changing my heart, my think, my thinking, my thinking. That you know what. I've been judging people, and God forgive me for that, you know. So what I'm saying is all this division is not good. That's God doesn't want to, We are his building, as it says in the, in the rest of, of um, Ephesians 2. Let's turn back to it. He says, he brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles who were far away from him, and peace to the Jews who were near. Now all of us come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit. White people don't have a different Holy Spirit than black people. In Christ, we have the same Holy Spirit. Seventh-day Adventists, if you're born again, you don't have a different Holy Spirit from people that are born again in a Catholic church. It's about being born again, not what denomination you belong to. And not what doctrine you believe either. Because all doctrines in churches are not true. So you have to go by what is in the word of God. What is resonating within your spirit? What is God telling you that is truth? I know my life has changed since I started believing that. You know what? I can't lose my salvation. What? No. He gave it to me. What? No. I'm sinning less. God is able to speak to my mind and say, Lorel, you judging people. You doing this and that. That's not who you are. You have the born again nature within. You have Christ nature within you. That's not you, girl. Don't do that. As we, as as our parents used to say to us when we was little, that's not nice. That's not who you are. Don't do that, baby. And that's what God is saying to us. Stop judging people. Stop judging. I'm talking to myself. Stop judging people. Stop. Stop looking at people as them, them, them. That's why we got a problem in this country too. Them, 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 them. They're the problem. Yes, there is systemic racism within this country. I'm sorry, it is. But every white person is not a racist and every black person is not a criminal. So if we could get that straight, we could understand one another that we're all made in the image of God. And stop this foolishness. Amen. Thank you, God. God says, he says, he brought the good news. He says, so now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with God's holy people. You are members of God's family. We are all members of God's family. If you have accepted Christ into your life and have the Lord Jesus Christ within you and you've been born again, you are in the family of God. I don't care if you're Catholic. I don't care if you're Seventh-day Adventist. I don't care if you're Baptist. If you have accepted Christ, this is what it is. I don't care if you're non-denominational and all of that because now that's a denomination, non-denominational. That's why I put it in the quotes. Just get Christ and live and grow in him and stop worrying about denomination. Or stop worrying about doctrines and rules and things. Now, yes, God has the the apostles' doctrine. What the apostles first taught. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 tells you what the gospel is. I want us to turn there right after I finish reading this verse. And we're going to turn and see what the gospel is to see what we're supposed to be preaching. We're not supposed to be preaching people's doctrines. We're supposed to be preaching Christ. And living him out in our life. Not that we do the living. But allow him. Let. Allow him to live his life through us. And not hinder it. With religiosity. Excuse me. Not hinder it with religiosity. And with doctrines that have nothing to do with the word of God. Or placing a doctrine. As if it is um, gospel truth. I thank God for the Sabbath day. It's a beautiful day for me to relax and rest. You know what I'm saying? Do ministry. But if I'm hungry, I'm going to go get something to eat from the store. I'm not going to sit. Not that I don't have food in my house. I have plenty of food. But we have this thing. Oh, no, we can't do that because it's the Sabbath. We can't do that. It has nothing. Your salvation has nothing to do with the Sabbath. The Sabbath is a day of delight for you and God and your family and your friends. To delight in him. 
And the lot of him don't sit there, don't mean sitting there reading the Bible all day neither. Or watching Jesus movies all day. It don't mean that. It means whatever you need it to mean on that day between you and him. If I want to go drive out to Montauk and get me something to eat and stop at a farm stand and say, oh, Jesus, look at this. Because that's how I do. I talk to Jesus all day throughout the day. And I don't care who thinks I'm crazy. Christ is in me. And I'm talking with him because we have a relationship. And he speaks with me also within my spirit. You know what I'm saying? We have this thing where it's like, my mom is coming. She don't realize I'm going live. I don't know if you hear her. But um, we don't realize that it's about what he's done in us. It's not about all of these other things. Now, we're going to get back to 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, because I want you to know what the gospel is. So, but let's read this now. So, now you Gentiles are no longer strangers. You are citizens. We are citizens of heaven. Yes, we live in whatever city we live in. Here on earth, but our true citizenship, the everlasting citizenship, is in heaven. Amen. We are children of God. So you are members of God's family. See, that's the next part of the verse. Together we are his house. Now that's the building of God. God gives us symbols. We are the building, we are the temple of God, and he is the cornerstone, as we're going to read right now. Together we are his house built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. All of these things are like a foundation to realize to the pinnacle, which is Christ. Christ is the cornerstone. Christ is the, the is everything, not the main thing. He is everything. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. It says that the apostles and, and prophets, the cornerstone is Christ himself. Sorry, I bent the phone too close. Well, you see my face. <laughs> cornerstone himself Jesus is the cornerstone himself Not the pastor of your church Not the bishop of your church Not the pope Even though I love uh, uh, I'm going to say St. Francis um, uh, Pope Francis I love St. Francis too Not the deaconess Not the head deacon Not the head elder They is not the cornerstone Christ is the cornerstone of us He is the one that is in, that is in us Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We are carefully joined together in him. God is trying to fit us together, but we're too busy fractioning ourselves. Oh, well, you're not the people of God because you don't keep the Sabbath. Oh, you're not so-and-so because you don't so-and-so. That is pride. That is pride, and that is not right. And I've been guilty of it. So guilty, and I'm trying to, to not trying. I don't like that word trying. God is changing my mindset to say, hey, stop that. That is not you. You are my daughter. And my daughter don't think like that against people and be judging them. Be judging people's motives. We cannot judge people's motives. And we cannot judge their Christianity. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We are carefully joined together in him. We're supposed to be a body, y'all. We're supposed to be one. We're supposed to help one another. We're supposed to be there for one another. I've had several people in the church betray me. You know, struggles I was going through, different things I was going through. Or maybe something I had to tell them that was on my heart. And I trusted them and told them and they blabbed it. You know, they blabbed it or they, they talked about me. I got people jealous of me right now for what? You don't even know me. And you talking about me behind my back. You don't even know. Trying to make me look bad in front of other people. You don't know who Laurel is. Only God knows Laurel's heart. And it's pure unto God. Because I have his nature within me. Maybe they need to realize and say, am I born again? Thinking like that against this sister in Christ. Now, okay, all right. We don't like people's personality. Different things. That's all right. But we're supposed to love one another and not think evil of one another. Mm. Check what you're thinking about your brothers and sisters. Because God is sure checking my thoughts. He's letting me to know. Stop judging these people. Those are your brethren. Amen. Hallelujah. God, I feel you here. 
Thank you, Jesus. We are carefully joined together in him. Let's come together. And people get scared when you said, oh, come together. That means, oh, my God. No, it just means be who you are in Christ. Love one another. And if you love one another, you won't have, you won't have no time to be busy judging. You won't have no time to be saying, oh, that brother over there. So what he has a problem with smoking? Do you realize it's very hard to give up smoking? I just came out of a substance use disorder, substance abuse class. That thing works on your freaking brain. They change your stuff in your brain. And we up here judge. I used to judge the people. Oh, why can't they just stop? Why can't they just stop taking drugs? Oh, they don't love their family because they can't stop. Sometimes they can't stop. And they may be born again. We look at things too spiritual. We too way, way up here somewhere. We don't realize that sometimes people have relapses. Maybe they were delivered and they got back into to it again. But that's not for us to say, oh, they're not a Christian because they, they went back into it. We got to stop this. We have to love one another. I'm not talking about just not looking over um, something that needs to be dealt with if somebody is doing wrong and they... Spreading the wrong in the church. That talk, that's talked about in um, 1 Corinthians 5. There was a man that was sleeping with his stepmother in the church at the time. And everybody just thought it was okay. Now, we have a lot of that in, in the church. You know what I mean? But what I'm saying is that we don't, we're not supposed to be living in these places anymore. Struggles, yes, we all have struggles. But we're not supposed to be living in places of judgment. Like if somebody get pregnant, they throw them out the church. What is that? Why are you throwing a sheep of God out of the church when they need to be held close? Yes, maybe they need to be told. You know what? This is this this was not a right choice. You know, but the baby is not to be blamed though either. We think that oh well, you know, now she's gonna have this baby. You know, the baby's not to be blamed. The baby didn't ask to come here. But we have to realize our, where our choices are leading us. That's all. And we have to be a support system to each other. You know, you have saying, oh, Laurel, no, you had the wrong attitude with that person. You know, you need to straighten that out. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, we need to stop all of this. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple of the Lord. Through him, you, Gent you Gentiles have been made a part of this dwelling where God lives in your spirit where God lives by his spirit excuse me his spirit is in us and we do live in the Holy Spirit now let's turn to 1 Corinthians 15 1 through 5, 4 because I want to show you what the gospel is the gospel is not the Sabbath uh, the everlasting gospel has nothing to do with the Sabbath I'm sorry my Adventist brethren and that's where my membership is. My membership is still there. But God has me there or within this, this organization to bring truth. More truth. The truth of the gospel, the, the gospel is a person, Jesus Christ. The gospel is not an idea. The gospel is not a day. The gospel is Jesus. And Jesus... Out of all of those other things, out of, uh, out of Jesus comes new life, joy. That's what I mean by all those other things, peace. And yeah, okay, maybe you keep Saturday holy. Maybe you keep Sunday holy. That's fine if you want to do that. But don't make it a God. Don't make it a doctrine where it's part of your, your organization where you have it within your baptismal vows to accept. I don't know. I think they did take that out. Have it in their baptismal vows to accept a woman who was maybe a prophet of long ago as the, she was a prophet maybe within your organization. And maybe God did give her some truth, but she wasn't the only prophet. And she didn't have all the truth. And some of those letters that she wrote was for those people specifically and not for you. And you had to understand that. They, people who listen to this, they know who I'm talking about. Maybe those let those some of those letters was written to other people for their situation, but you taking it. Oh no, this is what 
Nope. She said, we're supposed to do this, so we, we got to do this. We're not here to follow Ellen G. White. I'm sorry I said the name. We're here to follow Christ Jesus. Has Christ Jesus changed your life and your heart? I know he's changing mine, and I've been born again 30-something years. And he is still changing me, and he's going to continue to change me until he comes. And that's what it says in Philippians 1, 6. Being confident of this very thing that he which had begun to go work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. He began this work with me at 12 years old, and he's still working with me. He couldn't work with me when I was younger and being religious and, 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 and having a religious mind and thinking and, and worrying about losing my salvation and all kind of stupid things that was blocking him from working. Uh, now he's able to work because I realize who I am in him. Uh, it's about your identity, y'all. It's not about identity as being a seven-day Adventist or a Catholic. And I love my Catholic brethren. I love all my brethren. And I like something about each denomination. But God doesn't want us to be fractured. That's what I'm trying to say. Do you think that's the way he wants it, us being in separate denominations like this? No. 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 He wants us to be one. Now, people say, well, Laurel, how can we be one? One believes it. Well, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, that should be the only thing that unites you. But people have these, all of these fractures. Martin Luther didn't start the Lutheran church. The people who followed him did. Martin Luther didn't separate from the Catholic church in that sense to start another religion. He just wanted to understand the gospel the way that it was. And he was not understanding it from that perspective. And we know some things within that history of that, that blocked that. But then he got the full truth, not well, the full truth of the gospel. So. First Corinthians 15, one through four. The resurrection of Christ, the resurrection, the death and resurrection of Jesus is everything. Like I was explaining to my nephew. Jesus death. Gave us forgiveness and saved us from our sins and took away the guilty penalty of our sins and took the power of sin away from us. The resurrection of Christ gave us the new life in him because we were forgiven but dead. But then the resurrection of Christ made us alive unto him and gave us his new nature, gave us his nature, which is our new nature, which is the divine nature. Amen. And we're going to read what the gospel is. Paul says, now let me remind you, he's speaking to the Corinthians. Let me remind you, dear brothers and sisters. He calls them brothers and sisters. He doesn't look at them and say, oh, you Corinthians. Y'all ain't right. I don't want to have nothing to do with y'all because you don't believe like I believe. How dare we, we not have fellowship with another church, you know, another denomination because they are of another denomination. That's so stupid. If you grounded in truth, you don't have to worry about another denomination taking you. Oh, well, people say, well, I don't want my kids going to another church because then they're going to learn other. If your kid got Christ, you don't got to worry about it. That's what it's about. It's about Christ, not the doctrines you be teaching them. And yeah, I got a little attitude about it. Yeah, I'm from Brooklyn. I'm sorry. I'm like Jesus. I get aggravated with all of these Idioms and, 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 and ideologies that's not even of the word of God. And this is what we pushing into our kids. God, if God ever grant me to have kids, and it would be a miracle. Because I'm in menopause. But I am going to get remarried one day. And if God ever grant me to have children. Which would be wonderful. He, he, he's a wonderful God. I'm not going to be pushing no doctrines. I'm going to be pushing Christ. And I'm not, going to, I'm not even going to slam Christ down their throat. Oh, you need to get saved. You need to get saved. No. 
I'm gonna live it. So that when they see mommy, oh wow, mommy, mommy not arguing with daddy, mommy not. Oh wow, oh, okay. Yeah, I want Jesus. I want Jesus. Amen. He says, You welcomed it in, you welcomed the gospel in, you still stand firm in it. It is this good news that saves us. It is this good news that saves you if you continue to believe the message I told you. Unless, of course, you believe something that never was true in the first place. Now, some people say, well, see, you could lose your salvation because look at that sister. She not. Maybe she was never born again. Maybe she was just churching it. Maybe she did not understand the true gospel. And she never got saved. And you see her walking away. You know one thing, the same Holy Spirit is in me as in another born again believer. And that resonate, you resonate with each other. You have a kinship with another person that has given their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ and has been born again. And like it says in Romans 8, 14, Holy Spirit knows that we are Christ because we have been made born again through Holy Spirit. And we have a connection with Christ. God knows who are his children. Now, we're not to walk around, they God show they not. No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that sometimes you really feel that bond when you meet somebody. Wow. And they say something or they say something. I'm like, oh, wow. I knew you was a Christian. And not just saying something, but something that they said resonated with you. And you could just feel God in them. And you could see God in their lives. Amen. Nobody's perfect. But there's a difference between an unsaved person and a saved person. I don't care if you're sitting in the church house. If you're sitting in the church house unsaved, you're not saved because of the church. You're saved because of Christ coming into you and changing you. It said it is this good news. I pass on to you that was most important. And what had been passed on to me. Paul had an encounter with Christ. It was not a vision. Years ago, I thought it was a vision. It wasn't a vision. It was actual Christ standing before him. And that's awesome. That's like, oh, my God, that's so powerful. That if Christ was to just come and stand before me, oh, my God, I would just fall out and say, Jesus, I love you. Take me with you when you go back up. <laughs> but Christ is within me. You know, Holy Spirit is within me. Spirit of Christ. That's the Holy Spirit. It says, what had also been passed on to me? Christ died for our sins, just as the scripture said. He was buried and was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scripture said. See, it's from the scripture. It's from the word of God that we realize and know what the gospel is. He was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scripture said. I read that. And then he was seen by Peter and them and the twelve, and he was seen alive. But it says that he Christ died for our sins. That's the part I want you to get. And he was buried and raised on the third day. That's the gospel. I'm done here, y'all. I think I stayed on here an hour and a half. I got to listen to my Idris podcast, get in the pool, relax, and go get me some um, chocolate ice cream, my brownie nut fudge. <laughs> we have an old-fashioned ice cream shop called uh, Coils here in the neighborhood, and I love getting my ice cream, especially on a Saturday. Stop letting doctrine uh, strangle you. Get Christ to be free. And I thought about it. It came to me about us being the building of God. We, we, Christ is trying to build us up as a body. And we cutting the body down, cutting off the, the, the nose and the ears. And, the, and he's trying to build us up as, as the temple of God. And we, we taking this stone out saying it's not necessary. Oh, this brother or sister is not necessary because they have a, of another uh, uh, denomination. Now, if somebody is Muslim and you have a Christian, that, that's not compatible. But if you have two Christians from a different denomination, they've both been born again, they're in the body of Christ, sir. Just realize that I give you a stymie sauce, stymie from um, 
I don't like that name they gave Stymie with the rascals. Stymie means to hinder something. And the racism was even there. Even though the show was um, a way ahead of its time to have little black children and little white children playing together and, um, you know, doing their little life together, um, that the names that they gave the black uh, um, characters were racist. Stymie, Farina, Buckwheat, you know what I mean? Um, no, so I call him Sty. You know, but uh, I'll give you a sty smile. Have a good afternoon, a good Saturday, a good Sabbath. Enjoy God. Cook some meat on the grill like I did today. Go for a drive. Get in the pool. <laughs> you want to go get some meat? Go get some meat. You hungry? Yeah, I know you got food in the refrigerator. Go with Jesus. Jesus is going with you. Stop bottling yourself up in law and let Jesus set you free in love. God bless you guys. Remember, we are here to know God and to make him known. God bless you. Take care. Love you guys.